Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Amen. Grab your swords and go to Matthew 25. Please. <laughs> Matthew 25. Glory. In verse 1, Matthew 25 and verse 1, everybody there? Let's speak it, then the kingdom of heaven shall be like in ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Virgins are considered individuals that are Christians because they've been cleansed by the blood. Amen? Amen. Now, five of them were wise and five stupid or foolish. Okay. Five foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They, they neglected the presence of God. But the wise took oil in their vessels with them, and with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. And behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. The wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy your, for yourselves. In other words, nobody else can buy the presence of God for you. You do. And while they went to buy... The bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Again, it was the presence of God that made them ready. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. What happened? But he answered and said, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Why? Because God only knows his presence. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. God knows his presence. Somebody got it. He isn't looking for yours. We are to exchange our presence for his. Is everybody okay? So there were those that neglected the presence of God. As a Christian, Christian means Christ-like. The presence of God should be your priority in your life. It isn't, if it isn't, you ain't a Christian. This is reality. If God's presence is not a priority in your life, then you're not a Christian. Because that's what Christ-like means. The presence of God should be your number one, utmost of priority. No matter what. Because if it's not God's presence, it's someone else's. Does everybody get this? This is where many people falter. And Revelation chapter 12. God only knows whose presence? His. That's why he said, those who thirst and hunger shall be what? Filled. They thirst and hunger for righteousness. They thirst and hunger for his presence. His presence should be everything to you. You should be a lover of his presence. No matter what, anything that interferes with you getting in God's presence should be removed. No matter what it is, God's presence should be everything. Everything. Revelation 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. That means in God's presence. So the great dragon was cast out of the presence of God. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So now he was sent to the earth to deceive the whole world. But he, in other words, how's he deceiving the whole world with another presence? 
He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, which is the power of his presence, God's presence has come to what? Combat the presence of evil. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb because of repentance and by the word of their testimony because they speak the word of God. And they did not love their lives to death because they denied themselves. Is everybody okay? Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the, and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows it is a what? He knows it is a short time. Listen, this war that broke out in heaven has extended to the earth. Has everybody got it? What was openly seen has been divided by dimensional barriers with two realities, one seen and one unseen. Is everybody okay? In this extended war between light and darkness and righteousness and wickedness, there are warfare engagements. These warfare engagements are called battles. Everyone say battles. These are battles of life and death. A battle means to engage in combat. That's what a battle is. Engage in combat. In other words, we've always said that if you're not a, involved in the uh, battle, you become a casualty. Amen? So again, this battle, this war has extended to the earth and is continuous. It's a battle of two presences. The presence of light and the presence of darkness. And this battle continues and it will continue till you and I are removed from the earth and Jesus' presence comes and takes over everything. Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. That's why God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's knowledge is understanding of what the presence are. They don't even realize. People are walking in the wrong presence. The enemy will do everything he can to keep you from the presence of God. Genesis 6 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God, these were angels, saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful and that they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. In other words, these angels, these fallen angels, we just read that they were cast to the earth. Amen. They put on flesh. Fallen angels came from the unseen realm to put on flesh and came into the seen realm. And they went in and women and produced offsprings. And then the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, verse 2, that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for indeed he is flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Now remember, so God set a limit. He said, man, this is bad. It's bad what just happened. This is bad. There were giants on the earth in those days because they were the offsprings of Cain's family. Why? Because... Eve slept with the serpent, produced an offspring called Cain. Everybody got it? She was seduced by the serpent. Real simple. You think that tree was just a tree? Trees represent a presence. Is everybody okay? Some of you look shocked a little bit. What do you mean? I never heard this before. Right. The serpent seduced Eve and produced two children. One righteous, one wicked. Why? Because she was righteous herself. And there were giants in those days. Why? Because of the offsprings of Cain. Cain and Abel. and Because uh, Abel died, remember? Cain killed him, and he was the wicked one. And also afterwards, so there were giants already on the earth because of the fallen angels that went into, went because of one that 
the serpent that went in, the, the major fallen angel. And then the other ones, there was around 200 other angels that came and put on flesh and came into, this, into the earth. And they went into women. And also after when the son of, sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. The, those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. In other words, these were men of war. This is where you get the mythical things of Zeus. They were, called themselves gods and goddesses. And that's where you have um, um, all of this uh, false doctrine of all of these. Uh, that's where you have pyramids from. Who do you think built the pyramids? These were fallen angels. These were giants. They were offsprings. They were called Nephilim. And these Nephilims, they were offsprings. And so in this, they created all kinds of things while they were on the earth. In fact, they got to a point where they began to eat mankind. That's where cannibalism comes from. Because they couldn't feed them enough. And eventually, they began to eat, destroy one another. Let's go a little further. We'll explain some things. In verse 5, And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only what? Evil continuously. Why? Because there was another presence here. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds and of, of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now grace is God's unconditional love. Amen? And his what? Plan. So because Noah was upright with God, God said, I'm going to make a way of escape for you. But the rest I'm going to kill. Amen. Amen. Do you want to be the one where God makes a way of escape? Because Noah kept resisting the presence of evil. Does everybody got it? Noah was a resistor of the presence of evil. He was an upright man. Let's go a little further. Uh, I guess not. Is everybody okay? Amen. All right. This is ge genealogy of Noah. Verse 9, Noah was a just man, perfect in his what? Generations. Noah walked with God. In other words, he walked in God's presence. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jasphet. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with what? Violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So this is powerful. Again, these fallen angels that came from the unseen realm, they put on flesh, they came into women, produced offsprings, they were men of war, they were renowned, they were, some of them were giants, some of them looked normal, some of them were... Hybrids, all kinds of stuff. Strange looking. Some of them six fingers, six toes, and all kinds of things. But because they were an intermix of an angelic and human, they carried power. So they deceived many. People considered them as gods. They taught men how to make weapons. They taught women how to beautify themselves. They taught them how to, all kinds of things, to be self-independent away from God. No longer dependent on God, but self-dependent on, on themselves. Gods and goddesses, they had false doctrines. They were false deities. They were abomination to the Lord. They were rebellious to the true God of creation. Now, in the present time, we are seeing now that it's still continuing. Amen? Now, they, this lineage carried on. In fact, there are 13 satanic families that are ruling this earth. I'm not going to get heavy into this because I want to speak more about what's going on. I'm going to speak of one of them, Rothschild. The Rothschild family is the wealthiest uh, family in the world. They are worth $500 trillion dollars. Because they know that money rules the earth. But it's done by deception. They own all the banks. There's more of them. That's where you got the Rockefellers and all of them. These are satanic families. And they serve Satan. 
They sacrifice to do all kinds of things. They are, they are the offsprings of darkness. God has been trying to rescue as many of them as some of them come out of it and come and tell the truth of what's been going on and the satanic ritual abuse in their lives where children were satanically rich, their own children that were satanically ritually abused and used. Because their focus is power, they believe Satan is their God. That's where you have all of this royalty and all these weirdos and stuff thinking that they're kings and princes and all the other stuff. They're all from fallen family satanic bloodlines. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Again, Noah found favor from God because of his uprightness that pleased the Lord. And God gave him a way of escape. A way of escape. How many of y'all want a way of escape? Snap and write. You'd have to be an idiot if you didn't. <laughs> In 1 Timothy chapter 4. So what happened then when God destroyed and killed these offsprings with the flood, these offsprings became demons. Has everybody got it? They became what? Demons, disembodied spirits. In other words, their presence is still being carried. Oh, hallelujah. Their presence is still being carried. Demons are disembodied spirits. And the battle continues. Everyone say the battle. That's the name of the teaching. The battle. The battle must become a reality to you. If it's not, you'll become a casualty. 1 Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1, now the spirit what? Expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Amen. That some will depart from the faith. Why? Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, a deceiving spirit is called a demon. That means that presence. Man, if you could unzip the, the seen realm and look into the unseen realm, you would see individuals with demons all around them following them. Why? Because they're getting fed off of them. Demons get fed off of emotion, fear, rebellion, all of this stuff. Why? Because it's another presence. And they're speaking to them and they're causing them to react. They're causing them to release certain things and emotionally so they can get fed. Oh, hallelujah. Taking, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. These are offsprings of fallen angels that their spirits still remain here on the earth to serve Satan's kingdom. Their purpose is to influence possess individuals, and promote them to rebel against the truth of God Almighty. The truth and the presence of God Almighty. Has everybody got it? That's their purpose. Listen, if the enemy can keep you away from the truth and the presence of God, he's got you. We, we, have, we can't have any excuses. And does everybody get this? Listen, we don't want to miss what God's getting ready to do or doing right now. Amen? In Psalm 18. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Psalm 18. In verse 31. Psalm 18, verse 31. Let's speak it, please. For who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? 
It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. If he's arming you, what's he arming you for? The battle. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on a high places. He teaches my hands to make what? War. And my arms can bend a bow, a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarged my path under me so my feet did not slip. I have pursued my what? Enemies. And overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. I have wounded them so that they cannot rise. They have fallen under my feet, for you have armed me with strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You've also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. How many of all demons hate you? They cried out, but there was none to save them. God cannot save a demon. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. In other words, what was he doing? He was pursuing his enemy. God arms us. He teaches us to battle. Now, the Old Testament was more of, of a, a physical. Amen? So they had to kill with the sword and all kinds of other things. It was more physical. And, and but that was the Old Covenant. But the new covenant is spiritual because now we know that what affects the physical starts in the spiritual, the unseen. So God has given us the vision, the sight to see the unseen. That's why we know them by the fruits. It makes the unseen to become seen. Amen. Exodus 15. But if you're not one who pursues your enemy, <laughs> then you become a casualty. That's why we must be first strikers. If at any time in history, now is the time where we should be battling like crazy. Of all time in history, now is the time to carry the presence of God and battle like you've never done before. Amen. There is course of history being established right now. I don't know if you read about it, but I, um, there was a priest that died. Praise God, he went home for a minute. And, and in the presence of the Lord, the Lord told him, he said, he called Trump I'm, 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 I'm going to share what the priest said, all right? He, an angel front, sent by him. God said, I sent, told this priest, I sent Trump to change the course of history to prepare my return. That's what this priest said. I don't disagree with him. I agree with him. I believe God put a servant in office to turn the course of history. Why? Because he's turning over everything. The tables are being kicked over. As Jesus went into the temple, he kicked over the tables to expose everything. Why? Because God is exposing darkness. So for me and you, his presence must be vital. Vital. The warfare must be vital. The fight is vital. Your battle every day is vital. You can't let up. You can't compromise. Because when a wave and a storm comes... If you're not attached to the rock, you'll get thrown off of it. Oh, glory. In verse 1, Psalm 15 and verse, or exit 15, verse 1. Let's speak. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed grace gloriously. Uh, the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. Strength and song. Strength and song. They go together. Why? Because as you praise and worship God, you're exchanging your presence for his presence and you become stronger. Amen? The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. 
Listen, let me share something with you. When you get done with worship, you should have an eight-pack. Why? Because you worship so hard. Amen? You worship so hard. You go after him because you know. See, you must go through the dimensional barriers yourself. That's why you praise. Too many people quit. They can't even get out of the outer court. <laughs> They're still in the outer court. I did what I needed to do. Where are you, God? He says, wimp, get off your butt and worship and come after me. Come after me. He loves when you go after him. He says, when you find me, there's great reward. I love it. Man, anytime we get, listen, when it's time to worship, I'm going. I'm going after him. All my might, all my strength. I don't care if the next person next to me says, man, what a cow. Dude sounds like a cow. Too bad. Get away from me. I'm going after my dad. Amen? Verse 3, what does it say? The Lord is a man of what? War. Glory. That's my dad. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. He has chosen captives also are, are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. The Lord is a man of war. And you and I should be men and women of war. Demons should fear you, not come to you to get fed. Has everybody got it? But if you're not carrying God's presence, there's a level of presence that you must carry to overcome everything. If you're not carrying a level of presence that God has required you to overcome, demons are going to follow you because you'll be too easily provoked. You'll be too easily... They know that there's other things involved. They'll put things in front of you to sway you all the time. You'll walk in fear. All kinds of things. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, one of the things I hear people, well, the first thing I ask them when they, because when they fall, they, well, you know, I, I, I it's not because they stopped praying. It's because they stopped worshiping. They began to neglect God's presence or they began to compromise when it was time to worship. Well, yeah, I've done this before. The same old routine. Does everybody get this? Don't let the enemy bring that to your mind. Don't let them compromise you. You fight for God's presence because that's what the fight is for. Because if you're not fighting for God's presence, the presence of deception will come. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4. Let's speak it. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as what? Ministers. Ministers here, I want you to understand, are warriors. Amen? They're warriors. Of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit does what? The spirit gives life. Ministry. The word ministry means battle. When you go to ministry, you're going to battle. It's not foo-foo. Somebody got it? You're out there to drive darkness out. That's what ministries are supposed to do. They're supposed to train up for what? People to battle. They're to equip them to battle. Glory. Ministry means what? Battle. Engaged in combat. You know what? This is all about a battle of words. It's a battle of what? Words. The words are voices, aren't they? So it's a battle of voices, right? It's a battle of this presence. Why? Because we're there, every voice carries a presence. And it's either of light or darkness. It's words that move the angels of God or words that move the demons from hell or fallen angels. So God is either going to combat on your behalf or the powers of darkness are going to combat against you. But they fear the presence of God. They can't stand the presence of God. But you must reach a level, the presence of God. Without reaching that level. See, because that level of presence of God always maintains your identity. 
so that you're not just looking at yourself as a husband, a wife, or a, a worker, or, or whatever. You're looking at yourself as a warrior. And you know where you step and where you go, you're carrying the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Psalm 64. Psalm 64, let's speak it. Now, again, because it's a ministry of the Spirit, right? It's a covenant, it's a, it's a new covenant. Remember, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was physical. They don't kill blood and everything, you know. The new one is, the new covenant is, I'm going to kick your butt by what I speak. Amen? Because the Word of God is arm. It's all, it's ammo. So that's why you got to load yourself up. And when you speak, pull out Holy Ghost bazooka. Come on in the name of Jesus. You know, calling destructive fire down in areas. Verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a what? Like a sword. And bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. Remember, it's a battle of words, isn't it? Because it's a battle over presence. So you want to constantly drive out the presence of evil so they can't release their words to you. And that, and that, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of man are what? Deep. So again, the battle begins inside. And if you can't overcome the battle inside, you won't overcome the battle outside. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they will be they shall be wounded, so will he, will, he will make them stumble over their what? Own tongue. All who see them shall flee away. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Again, it's called the tongue of the sword. The tongue. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, that life and death are in the power of the tongue or the power of words. Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the, my, the mouth or his words. See, people are still living too much on worldly things and not living on the eternal things. They're not fighting for God's presence. In fact, there's not even a thirst and hunger for God's presence. There's more of a thirst and hunger for money and fame and fortune. Instead of God's presence, where you and I came from. I think that's a dishonor to the Lord. We should be running in the presence of God. Not running from the presence of God. <laughs> Ephesians 6. But that's the difference between foolish virgins and wise ones. <laughs> Again, our life should revolve around the presence of God. Does everybody get that? It should revolve around the presence of God. It shot not, should not revolve around anything else. It revolves around the presence of God. <laughs> Why? Because without His presence, you and I are nothing. We can't overcome. We're easily swayed. We become frail and weak, misled, deceived. Too easily. Yes, the Lord loves us. His unconditional love is always waiting for me and you. But if you love him, you would love his presence. Or else you really don't love him. Because when you love someone, you want to be in their presence, right? Ephesians 6, verse 1. 
Let's speak it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, spiritual children, amen? Spiritual children, obey your spiritual fathers and mothers. Honor your father and your mother, which is first is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. <laughs> I would say that's kind of a warning. And your fathers do not, and your fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in what? Training. Everyone say, I need to be trained. <laughs> and admonish of the Lord. Without training, there's no gain. That's why God chastens those he loves. Why? Because there's correcting. If you stop your training, the training never stops. Why? Because the enemy's setting or releasing a new strategy, and God's giving you a strategy to overcome the enemy. So the training never stops. But you're not going to get these things unless you're in God's presence. Because these things are specific things are released in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able be able to what? Stand against the what? Wiles of the devil or the trickery or his presence. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I don't think people still get this yet. But against principalities, against powers of darkness, against the rulers of the kingdom of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, unseen. Your battle is unseen. Your fluence is unseen. You don't even realize you're doing what you're doing until you finally get in the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore girding, having girded your waist with truth. Why? Because you can't outrun nothing with your, your pants fall down. You got to have the belt of truth, right? Amen. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which we'll be able to quench the voice of the stranger called fiery darts. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the what? Word of God. Which is the what? Word. The Word of God. That's your ammo. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in tongues or in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me especially, that utterance may be given, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For we are ambassadors in Christ. Has everybody got it? We are ambassadors in Christ. Man, we should be bold. Don't worry about offending anyone. If you're going to rescue them from hell. Amen. The heck. Don't worry about that. Jesus offended everyone. I mean, he really shook their stuff, man. Everywhere he went, he was calm and meek, but then he was bold. And he was out driving out the powers of darkness all the time. Amen. Listen, if you're not offense to the world, you're offense to God. Nice. Spiritual children, submit, training, we need to have the full armor of God for what? For battle, to engage in combat of the unseen realm, to resist the enemy and then attack evil influence. Drive them out. Don't play no games. As soon as you sense something, stop and take it. Take the authority. Don't wait. Don't compromise it. You don't have to wait to find out. Let me see. Is this evil? If you have to question yourself, it's thinking evil. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10. As soon as a question comes up of anything that would be against God or what you're doing, remember, man, he's always trying to interrupt what God has you doing, you know. Because you must complete what you got to do in this season so you can enter the next. 2 Corinthians 10. Mm. 
In verse 3, for though we walk in the natural realm, we do not walk according, to, we don't war according to the natural realm. Amen? Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. A stronghold is a memory lie. Amen. That means that presence of evil is spoken to you and you agreed with it and now you stored it. Hello? Yeah, man, I'm telling you. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but mighty in God, pulling down these memory lies, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth of God Almighty, and bringing every one of those stinky thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and get ready to punish them. And all disobedience... When your obedience is fulfilled, that means you must take authority. Well, if you're not filled with the Spirit, dressed with the presence of God in the full armor, if you're not loaded up with the Word of God, how, how are you going to combat? You're not. You're going to be swayed. Remember, the devil knows the presence of God that's on you and what level the presence of God is on you. The presence of God is the number one priority in your life. Every time I hear about somebody doing something, whatever it's, Lack of God's presence. Lack of God's presence. Lack of God's presence. I just heard of, unfortunately, of another gentleman that died yesterday. Overdose. He left here. Lack of God's presence. Does everybody get it? The problem is the lack of the presence of God in our lives. This is the problem. That's all it is. So what do you need to do? You need to get into God's presence. Amen. Amen. James chapter 1. The battle of the unseen. Our voices, right? Evil presence of influence that, that promotes sin, deception, rebellion, and bring bondage. They reject, causes an individual to reject the truth and the presence of the Lord. And it's because of lack of assembling and seeking. Lack of assembling and seeking. Does everybody get this? James 1. Verse 20. James 1. Okay. Let's start somewhere. Okay, 19. James 1, 19. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Glory. You getting stirred up to kick butt? Amen. Learn or burn. Amen. But those who are learned will cause the burn. Verse 19, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to what? Hear, Hear and slow to speak. <laughs> slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to what? Save your souls. Again, the word of God is ammo. You got to load up. But be doers of the word and not hearers only doing what? Deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. He is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law or freedom um, the perfect uh, 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 liberty continues in it. Can, does what? Continues. Everyone say continue. continue. If you don't continue, you're going to forget. Amen. If you continue, you're going to remember. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and it is not a forgetful hero, be a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Blessed. Again, the word is ammo to speak. Again, Jesus said, man can't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
His word is written, be doers of, and be fighters engaging in combat by speaking and singing the words of God. Because what you sow is what you reap. What you speak is what you eat. Acts 3. Acts chapter 3. And then one more scripture. The battle... The battle. Many people are losing the battle. But many people are winning the battle. Praise God. In Acts 3.18. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be what? Converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of what? Refreshing may come from what? The presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ who has preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you, do. It shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow as many as spoken have also foretold these, th these days. You are sons of the prophets and the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be what? Blessed to you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. In other words, repent, get cleansed with the blood, and get refreshed in God's presence. But if you ain't fellowshipping, you ain't getting refreshed. Amen? Amen? Whoops, had a couple more scriptures. Sorry about that. Psalm 97. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are quick. The battle. The battle. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His, light, his lightnings light the world. His earth sees the trembles. The mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. Hello. See, so wherever you're going to go, mountains will melt. The enemy. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all peoples will see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved idols, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion here and is glad. The daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all the gods. You who love the Lord should hate what? Evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is shown forth on the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. In his presence. Darkness, deception, voice of demons are exposed. And it's exposed for you to remove. There is refreshing, resetting, restoring repentance. There is strength and power and his anointing, the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty. You can't win without the presence of the Lord. You can't. 
You will stay in the cycle of bondage, addiction, oppression. You will stay in the cycle of lack. You will stay in the cycle of deception. Learning but not able to be trained. And the big one is fear. You will maintain an area of fear. You cannot trust God. Still trusting in self-reliance, which is actually torment. Many fall into a religious state without God's presence and without relationship with him. They fall into a religious state of being without his presence. Does everybody understand it? Again, without his presence, they lose the peace, joy, and righteousness. See, you, gotta, you, you should tell by your own fruit. Are you thirsty and hungry for God's presence? Do you want more of him? If you don't, then you're in trouble. Amen? Amen. This is where people, when a person is easily, easily offended, you can tell there's no, no presence. They react instead of respond. They think worse first. <laughs> They're prideful. All of these things come up when the lack of God's presence is there. Let me tell you something. You, you miss two worship services, you know. You miss three, everybody else knows. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> That's why we're to work out our own salvation. Amen. With what? Fear and trembling. We're to drive out the evil presence and bring in God's presence. Look at Luke, Luke 4 for a second. Luke 4. And then one more, okay? <laughs> Luke 4. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Luke 4, verse 18. That's why the word says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Why? Because it's God's presence. Only His presence brings freedom. In 18, it says what? Let's speak it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In other words, His presence. Because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, he's empowered us by his presence to preach and teach and heal and rescue, to bring sight. Let me share something very important. One of the things in God's presence God, he releases his promises. There are certain things that are released in his presence. And one of the things that's released many times is revelation. Okay, are you ready for this? Can you handle this? See, because he wants us to be able to see what he sees. That's his greatest joy. Does everybody get this? His greatest joy for me and you is to see what he sees. Because if you see what he sees, you won't be deceived. Every revelation removes another scale. I'm going to say this again. Every revelation removes a scale. That's why some people don't see as well as others. The more, every revelation moves another layer of a scale. Remember, we were born with the scales. The first big chunk of scales came off when you got baptized in the Holy Spirit. But then there are other scales still need to keep coming off because the enemy's always trying to replace them. Some people can't see beyond themselves. That's why we'll be able to see all the way through in every dimension. We're going to know by fruits. Every revelation removes another veil, another scale. Why? So you can see deeper. And the more you see deeper, the more thirst and hunger, the more you want him even more. Even more. Some people will never reach that because they don't want to reach it. They are content and comfortable in the comfort zone. 
but they miss too many things that God is trying to bring them. They miss it. They're more self-reliance. Amen. Everything is more important to them. Families, jobs, reputation, everything else is more important to them than God's presence. Again, there's going to be, you're going to see more and more of those that are foolish and those that are wise. Again, every revelation takes a scale off another layer of scales to see more and go deeper. And let me share something with you. You can never get too much of God. I get people telling me, man, you're just too much of God. Well, you're a moron. But if, if you don't want more of God, you got a problem. Oh, the battle continues and is complete until it's complete with Jesus' return. I'm going to close it, Hebrews 10. You can find yourself in the lack of presence of God. You begin to push your agenda instead of allowing God's agenda to establish. Amen? You become bitter. You get into a woe is me circumstance, and you begin to blame others. <laughs> or you become jealous. I don't understand why God's this is. Why don't you get in his presence and find out? Hebrew 10. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 19. Hebrews 10, 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to what? Enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a what? True heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, or an evil presence, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Be ready. Amen? Let me tell you something very important. The devils, the powers of darkness, the demons test you. They challenge you. And they know what level of presence God is on you. They know. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory and honor. We are honored and blessed. Lord, we just ask that your continued presence dress us and possess us. Lord, give us the boldness, give us the sight, and release revelation so we may see more and more of you and how awesome you are. Let the seed be protected so it may grow and bear fruit in every part of our being. Become like-minded with the mind of Christ and like-hearted in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.